the topic, injustice will be punished. The aim of the teaching is as follows. A. To recognize intervention of God in the situation of Jesus as a God of justice. B. To identify the God-given wisdom Esther displayed in fighting for justice for our people. See, to explain that justice will prevail over injustice as seen in the case of the Jews. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this privileged opportunity we have. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that as you speak to us this morning, we will hear you clearly, and what we hear shall remain with us and bring forth fruit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because I answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. We are reading from the book of Esther, chapter seven. That's where we have the. That's where we have the topic today. The topic injustice will be punished. Now, I will read according to the relevant portions only, so that we don't waste time. And I will read to your hearing from here, Esther chapter seven, verse one and two. So the king and Haman came to Esther's banquet. Again, during the wine course, the king asked her, What is your petition, Queen Esther? What do you wish? Whatever it is, I will give it to you, even if it is half of my kingdom. Praise the Lord. So what happened here? Under this subtopic, the real permit, Mordecai made a principal stand not to bow to any man except God. The principle was biblical and positional. Positional in the sense that Israel is God's own country. This offended Haman, who had just been promoted to the position of the highest bureaucrat under the king. Haman therefore made plan not only to hang Mordecai, but also to totally destroy the Jews in Susa. Mordecai contacted Esther, the queen, and with fasting and prayer, bombarded heaven for intervention. Esther asked for a royal permit. To discuss this with the king. It is not possible for anybody to just jump upon the king and say whatever I want to say. It has to be by permission. A permission that follows processes before approval. So she asked for royal permit. The heavens opened and the permit was granted. So she, she now thought that there should be a fasting together with the rest of uh, the Jews and their prayer. They had fasting and prayer together. And after that prayer, uh, Queen Esther went to approach the king. And it not only planned to kill Mordecai, he also wanted to eliminate the Jews. So, and God turned this round. And the same news that uh, Amman built for Mordecai was the same news that hung him. Praise the Lord. So that was what happened to him there. And we are seeing that there is a method that Esther used to arrive at the solution to our problem. I pray that as we study alone, we will understand in Jesus' name. The second lesson explains is Esther's request. Esther's request. Now, the first instance was just to seek permission. The second instance is to pronounce what she wanted. Now, we're going to read the scriptures. We will find that in Esther chapter 7, verse 3 to 4. I will read very quickly. 3 to 4. 3 to 4 says, And at last Queen Esther replied, If I have won your favor, 
O King, and if it is if it pleases you, it pleases your majesty, save my life and the lives of my people. For I and my people have been sold to those who destroy us. We are doomed to destruction and slaughter. If we were only to be sold as slaves, perhaps I could remain quiet. Though even then there would be incalculable damage to the king and no amount of money could begin to cover. So that is it. He now laid the matter bare. My problem is that there is someone in this kingdom that wants to kill me and that wants to kill the rest of my people. The king could not take it. He was so angry. And he said, Who is that? Who can that be? When he said that, Queen Esther now turned to Mordecai, turned to Haman, and pointed, This man, Haman, is the one. And the king got angry, and without much ado, a veil was put upon Haman. The veil suggests that he's condemned to death. So he was moved to that place where he will be hung. And like I said earlier on, that place that he prepared, that he was hung, was actually prepared for his enemy, Mordecai. But God turned it around only for him to be the one that will hang in the gallows he himself prepared. Praise the Lord. And I declare that every uncircumcised Philistine in your life and in my life who is working for your destruction and my destruction by the speaking of this word of this morning shall pay with their own lives in Jesus name. Amen. By the word that we have spoken this morning and by what God has spoken this morning which we are all learning about every enemy of us every enemy that that is working for your death and for my destruction they will be consumed this day in Jesus name. Amen. So that is how um, the request went. Now let's look at the third lesson explain the death of Haman. You know, it is terrible to have very bad advisors. Haman was advised by some people. We need to look at those advisors so that we can learn the lesson there. Haman didn't know what to do when he was so provoked, but he was advised by some people. I don't know what type of advisors you have around you. But let's see what this word done here. Let's look at Esther chapter 7, verse 5 to 8. By 5 to 10, we'll see what happened there. I read very quickly because of time. 5 to 8 says, What are you talking about, King uh, Ahosuerus? Demanded. Who would dare touch you? Esther replied. This wicked, this wicked Haman is our enemy. Then Haman grew pale with fright before the king and queen. The king jumped to his feet and went out into the palace garden as Haman stood up to plead for his life to Queen Esther, for he knew that he was doomed. In despair, he fell upon the couch where Esther was reclining, just as the king returned from the palace garden. Will you even rape the queen right here? In the palace before my very eyes, the king roared. Instantly, the death veil was placed over her man's face. Then Habona, one of the king's aides, said, Sir, Haman has just ordered a 75 foot gallows constructed to hang Mordecai, the man who saved the king from assassination. He stands in Haman's courtyard. Hang Haman on it, the king ordered. So they did, and the king's wrath was pacified. Now, what do we learn from here, essentially? You can prepare a bosom for somebody, but if that man is with God and is walking according to God's will, that evil will return to the planet. Praise the Lord. So that's one thing, one very big lesson we cannot ignore here. Already, the gallows has been prepared by the enemy, prepared for Mordecai. Why? Because he said they will not bow to any man except to God, which is a principle stand that is helpful to the church and to the kingdom. He said they will not bow to any man except God. 
and that was a positional uh, a disposition and it was also a biblical position so what happened there because of that everybody was bound to hammer as well as now that it was promoted to the head of bureaucracy but Mordecai refused to bow and because that is the agreement they have come to as Jews in the their relationship with God, he stood by it and because of that Haman wanted to wipe out not only Mordecai who started the matter but the entire Jews. So what happened? When this matter was brought to the notice of the king, the whole thing turned around against Haman. Haman was ordered to be hung and immediately he was hung the king's anger came down. I pray that as we labor in this world, as we walk towards finding our way to heaven, if any wickedness is prepared against us, the wickedness will turn against the person who prepared it in the name of Jesus. So that is a lesson for us. I just want to say that uh, I don't know if anybody has a question or contribution. While you are working on that, may I ask the following two questions? And uh, remember also that any question you could not provide adequate answers to can be uh, um, sent back to the church via YouTube for further discussion in the future. So these are the questions I would like to ask. Number one, share a practical experience of divine intervention in a seemingly unjust situation. Have you ever passed through an unjust situation? How was this situation addressed? Then the second one is uh, discuss the role of wisdom in Esther's request for justice for her people. At what stage do you think Esther displayed this wisdom? Praise the Lord. So that is Sunday school for us today. I put that in our own various places we will be meeting. We will deliberate on these questions and then any other thing that may arise in the course of the study shall so be made richer than we are before we met in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Happy Sunday to you all in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord, for yet another time in your presence. Thank you for this grace that we have to be here in your presence, even to hear your word. We pray, Father, that indeed, by the truth of your word, we shall be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for your light to shine upon our heart as we hear these words in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless everyone, O oh God, under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. People of God, it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Because of the times that we have found ourselves, we cannot go further except we seek the Lord. These are the days that if we are going to survive, if it shall be well with us, we need to seek the Lord. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, So for yourself, righteousness, Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He comes and rains righteousness on you. The people in the days of Hosea went into idolatry. They were disobedient. They turned their back against God. And God had to speak to them through the prophet to return them back unto Himself by seeking the Lord until he raise righteousness unto them until God changes his mind concerning them for good because things were not really going well with them in those days and I tell you our own time here now the times that we have found ourselves is not different all that is happening is as a result of the entire world having forsaken the Lord because of technological advancement, we felt we do not need God any longer. Look at those advanced countries, full of idolatry. But I tell you, 
If we too will not seek the Lord, we'll be cut off with it. God forbid. And that is why God is calling on us that we need to return to Him. We need to seek Him. If there's any time in the history of man, it is now that we need to, to seek the Lord. In Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 to 3, it says, Come and let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. He is going forth, he is established as the money. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. This is God's mind for us this moment. It is time for us to seek him and to return to the Lord. All that is happening suggests to us that we have sinned against God individually, collectively, and we need to repent. And one thing is sure, if we return back to the Lord, the Bible says he will heal us. He will bind us up. We shall be revived. God is set out to visit us, to bless us, to turn this situation. That we have found ourselves positive for our good. God can change any situation. We know it. But you see, there's nothing God will do except His people wake up to cry unto Him. And that is why this is the time for us to really seek the Lord individually and collectively. We need to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Firstly, we are living the end time. We are already in the previous times. It is here with us, characterized with tremendous increase in evil activities, moral decadence, idolatry, and lawlessness. There's lawlessness, corruption everywhere. And behind all this is the manipulation of the enemy. How are we going to remain a Christian? Are we sure that we will not be contaminated in these evil days? Are we sure that we will be able to escape these evil days without being hot, without becoming a casualty. These are the days that we need to seek the Lord for His grace, for spiritual strength, so that we will not be caught up with the evil. We need God more than ever. Second, the global economy is in trouble. There is already economic meltdown globally and it's already having negative impact on the economy of nations individuals families and the church is not also left behind and i tell you there is much worry in the land there is anxiety people are not sure whether they are going to survive tomorrow they don't know what is going to happen next and totally if God does not change his mind. Are we going to survive his wrath? If it is true that God is actually pouring his wrath to correct us, to bring us back to himself, and we refuse to turn unto him, to return back to him, are we sure that we will still be able to live? What if another virus should break up and this pandemic how are we going to escape it? That will grant the whole global economy. I tell you, people of God, it is time to seek the Lord. For mercy, it is time for us to repent of every sin and turn to worship the true God. Every one of us need to repent. We need to search ourselves. We need to look inward and see where we have departed from the Lord. This is the time for us to seek His ways and walk in it. This is the time for us to turn away from our iniquity. It is time to continue in God's word. If we have departed from God's word, let's return back to his word. In John chapter 8, verse 31, he said, If you he spoke, he spoke to this word unto them that believe in him, he said, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples. And in verse 32, he says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If we are going to experience deliverance, if there's going to be help that will come from above, we must 
return unto the Lord. We must sow in righteousness. We must begin to change our ways before Him. But for us who are children of God, I have good news for you. It is true that the devil always loves to attack the economy of nations and of individuals. But for you who have given your life to Jesus, your economy is not in the hands of the enemy. Because everything has been given to us to enjoy by God. Right from the beginning, Adam was the God of this world. The thousand cattle on thousand hills, silver and gold that God has made were put here on earth for him to have dominion, to have authority and to enjoy. But because he sold out when he committed the high treason, Satan became the God of this world and is the one controlling the finances, the economy of nations. But for you, because of Jesus who came and defeated Satan and took the authority away from him and has given us the authority and dominion, our economy is no longer under his control. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our economy is safe and secured. And God will take care of us even in these hard times. God is a good God. He's a good Father. He will take care of you. Your economy will not be frustrated in the name of Jesus. Your economy will not run down in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to Jesus who causes us to triumph always. And I tell you, in this economy meltdown, by His grace and by virtue of what Jesus has done, you will survive it. We shall survive it in the name of Jesus Christ. God will meet your need. Yes, it is true that Satan is attacking our finances, but you can prevail if you also take your place. If you take the responsibility to stand with authority in the name of Jesus, to rebuke the enemy, and to buy the devil and to, to, uh, to command him to take off his hand from your finances. You have a part to play. If you are going to enjoy God's provision, all that God has done, all that God has restored, if you are going to enjoy them, you need to take your part. God has provided the money. He has provided everything that you need in this world. It is, it is Satan alone who is withholding it. God wants the best for us. But we must take our place in the place of prayer. Bind the devil over your finances. Command the devil to take his hand off your finances and all that belongs to you. And command him to lose the blessings that he has withheld from you. Don't put all the responsibility on God. No. You must stand in the place of authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand against the devil. Stand against all circumstances that do not line up with God's will and purpose for your life. If it is money, be specific. Whatever you want, be specific and receive it in His name. Also, in these latter days, we can enjoy the ministry of angels. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Amen. We that are heirs of salvation, you that have given your life to Jesus Christ, these are the days that God is going to minister to you. He's going to serve you through the ministry of angels. And I tell you, you can command your angels to minister to you in any area of your life. Jesus spoke, he said that the children have their angels beholding the face of his father in heaven. And we used to think that when we grow up, our angels, or the angel assigned to us, is no longer operational. No. Even when we grow up, the angels are waiting for our command. They want to serve us, but they want to hear what you want them to do. And if you do not know that these are the ministry spirit that are supposed to serve you, 
you will not give them any command and you will not enjoy what they have to offer. These are the days that you can take advantage of many spirit for your protection from evil. As we have in Psalm 91, he said he will give his angels charge over you to preserve us from noise, noisome pestilences, from every plague. And when you believe that and you take advantage of that, I tell you, it will work. Tell the angels to go and cause help to come. Cause them to go and protect you in your ways. And it shall be so. I encourage you, put your angels to work in these days, in these last days, in these evil days. And your testimony shall be sure in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you, Lord, now to continue in His word. Continue in God's word that set men free, that brings deliverance into our, our lives. Seek the Lord. Take the place of your authority. Take your place of authority in His name. The Bible says when there's a casting down, there's a lifting up. Even though there's economic meltdown, for you who has given your life to Jesus, there's a lifting up. You need to believe it. There's a lifting up for you in your finances. There's a lifting up for you in your, in your economy. There's a lifting up in your business. In all areas of your life. And for everyone watching this telecast, I break the power of the evil one over your life. I break the power of the enemy over your finances, over your economy, over all that concerns you. In the name of Jesus. And if there's any money being owed you, if there's anything that is hanging that the enemy has withheld from you, I command the release of it in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go through this new week, may you enjoy abundant life in the name of Jesus Christ. May fullness of joy be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen.